Here we're going to look at a nice little integral representation of the natural log function. In particular, we want to show that for all t bigger than zero that are real numbers, in other words, we're on the interval zero to infinity, we have the natural log of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x minus e to the minus x t all over x dx. And we're going to use Fubini's theorem, which is equivalent to Feynman's trick for integrals. And comment, comment down below if you guys want to see a proof that these two methods are equivalent. So Fubini's theorem has to do with interchanging the order of integration for a multiple integral. And Feynman's trick has to do with interchanging the order of integration and differentiation. Okay, so let's get going with our first solution, which will be using Fubini's theorem. So I'll start with the right-hand side here. So I'll just recopy that. I have the integral from zero to infinity of, now I'm gonna go ahead and write this as one over x times the quantity e to the minus x minus e to the minus xt dt. Great. Now the next thing that I wanna do is factor a minus sign out of that. So I'll do that by putting a minus here. That's going to change the sign here and the sign here. So now we have minus 1 over x, and then we have e to the minus xt minus e to the minus x. But we can look at this and see that this looks like the zeroth integral of a certain function. In other words, I can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to infinity. Now I have minus 1 over x. And now this looks like e to the minus xy evaluated from 1 up to t dt. Sorry, dx. So now let's talk our way through that. So notice here, these are y values. So I have y equals 1 to y equals t. So notice if I plug in y equals t, I get e to the minus xt. And that's exactly this right here. And then if I plug in y equals 1, I get e to the minus x, and that's this term right here. Okay, great. But now what we can see is that all of this, which I am boxing in blue, can be rewritten as a definite integral with lower bound of 1 and upper bound of t. So this is exactly equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, and then that boxed blue part will be the integral from 1 to t, and now we have e to the minus xy dy dx. So again, if we look at this innermost integral, we see that we can easily take the antiderivative of e to the minus xy, that'll give us minus 1 over x, times e to the minus xy, then we have to evaluate it at 1 and t, so we regain our original expression right there. Okay, so now I'm not going to check carefully the hypotheses of Fubini's theorem to show that we can exchange the order of integration here. I'll let you guys do that, but suffice it to say, we can exchange the order of integration here. And so that's going to give us the integral from 1 to t, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of the same thing, e to the minus xy dx dy. Okay, good. Now what I want to do is take the antiderivative of that innermost integral. So let's see what we get there. We have the integral from 1 to t, and now this is going to be minus 1 over y, and then e to the minus xy. We need to evaluate that from 0 to infinity. And now notice that is x equals 0 to x, and I'll put an arrow there because it's really the x tending towards infinity. That's in fact a limit and now we have dy. Okay, so now if we let x tend towards infinity, so notice that's gonna give us a zero here. Especially, we wanna notice that all values of y are between one and t, where t is a positive number. So that's okay in this case. And then if we plug in x equals zero, we'll get e to the zero, which is zero. But that's the lower bound of integration, which will change the sign here. So that gives us the integral from one to t of one over y dy. But that is the derivative of the natural log. In other words, here we get the natural log of y evaluated from one to t. We don't need an absolute value sign here because we have this value of t up here. And that gives us exactly the natural log of t minus the natural log of 1, but the natural log of 1 is 0. 
good. And so that builds this formula using Fubini's theorem. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and erase this and we'll build this formula one more time using Feynman's trick. Now we're gonna build this formula one more way using Feynman's trick, exchanging the order of integration and differentiation. So here's what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and set the function f of t equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x minus e to the minus x t over x dx. Good. Now what I'll do is I'll take the derivative of both sides of this equation that will form an ordinary differential equation that we can use to solve for this function itself. But before we do that, I wanna notice that f of one is equal to zero. Let's talk our way through that. So if I plug in one for t, I have e to the minus x minus e to the minus x. In other words, I have zero in the numerator there. That makes this whole integral zero because we are integrating the constant function zero. Okay, great. Now what we wanna do is take the derivative with respect to t of the left-hand side. So I'll write that as f prime of t, but that's gonna be equal to the integral from zero to infinity. And now I need the partial derivative with respect to t of e to the minus x minus e to the minus x t over x dx. And so again, I'm using this trick down here which allows us to uh, exchange the order of differentiation and integration. And when we bring that inside, we get a partial derivative. So now keeping in mind with respect to t, x is a constant. So using the sum rule and the constant multiple rule for this partial derivative with respect to t, we can simplify the inside of this integral. So we have the integral from zero to infinity of the partial with respect to t of e to the minus x over x. So that would be like that first term and then minus one over x times the partial with respect to t of e to the minus x t. That would be like that second term. And then we're integrating that all with respect to x. Okay, great. So now we notice that this is purely a function of x. So if we take the partial with respect to t, we get zero. Now we can take the derivative of this using the chain rule. So notice with respect to t, that's gonna give us a minus x that comes down. That'll cancel the minus one over x and leave us with the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x t dx. Great. So now we can take the antiderivative of that. That's gonna give us one over t and that'll be negative e to the minus x t evaluated from zero to infinity. And now I wanna point out here that this is x equals zero to x approaching infinity. So notice as x approaches infinity, this e to the minus x t will approach zero. And as x equals zero, that's just gonna give us um, one because e to the zero is one, but that's the lower bound. That's gonna cancel this minus sign out. So we have one over t. So now let's notice that we've built an ordinary differential equation, f prime of t equals one over t, where f of one equals zero. So the fact that f prime of t equals one over t, just integrating both sides of that with respect to t will give us f of t equals the natural log of t plus some constant. But then plugging in our initial condition, we will see that that constant is equal to zero, leaving us with this f of t is equal to the natural log of t, which is again exactly what we wanted to show. And that's a good place to stop.